Welcome to a SimSchool Fast Facts video. In less than five minutes, we'll tell you all the basics that you need to know for understanding SimSchool observations so that you're able to monitor your own progress. We'll log in and look at course content. We'll create and view a module summary. We'll create and view a module report, and then we'll dig into exactly what that data means. First, let's log into SimSchool. We've logged into Max's account, and Max has already been working hard in his course. When we navigate to his modules, let's go ahead and look at a class in which Max has taught each of his classes and there are module reports available. We can see that because in his teaching sims, there are green check marks for all of his classes. That means he's both taught for the requisite amount of time and he's gone to observations and created a report. Both of those things must be done. And let's go look at observations. The first piece of information that we get on how we did in actually teaching this simulation and how Max's performance changed over time is high level information that averages every time we taught a particular class. What were the academic gains, the emotional gains of the simulated students that we had in that class? And then what was the overall effectiveness as means of both of these indicators just averaged together? So one of the things that's really important to know is that this isn't like a letter grade. This is by no means saying that Max was only 13% successful in teaching his students. What that means is that 13% of the students in this class, just the class periods that he taught, had academic improvement and 54% had behavioral and emotional improvement. So that's really good. What we suggest is that by the last time that you teach a class, which should be the best example of how you're able to work with the students you were given, the lesson plan that you inherited, any resources, and the seating arrangement that you had, the last class that you teach should be the best representation of how you were able to do. And that's the data that most often instructors will really dig into. What we know is that between 40 and 60% overall effectiveness is very good and very normal. Above 60% effectiveness at any point indicates that Max, in this case, has really started to understand this particular class and is managing their academic needs and their behavioral needs better. Anything above 80% is really exceptional, and we shouldn't expect that for ourselves. Think about that in a real-world context. Would I expect in any class that I teach that over 80% of the students in that class, in any class period that I teach them, would have academic gains? Maybe not. Certainly not 100%. That doesn't happen in real life, and it won't happen in sim school. And I should also remember that if I'm teaching students that have particular learning challenges and needs, achieving academic gains to any degree may be a huge accomplishment. For myself, and I can see that Max has done the same, what you really want to look at is improvement over time. It's really clear that the first time that Max taught this class, he was just experimenting. He was getting to know the students. In fact, if he'd had 0% gains across the board, and maybe 10 or 20% gains the second time he taught, that would also be really normal and it would still represent growth. But what we can see is Max clearly figured out the right way and the most successful way to work with his class. And over time was very consistent in academic gains, emotional gains, and in overall effectiveness. So that's one set of information that we get, but it's not all and it's not the most important. We really wanna make sure that we look at each class and that we very consciously look at a report because here is also valuable information for us. Regardless of the kinds of students that we have in a class, we know that we really need to be looking at utilizing best practices in teaching. And it doesn't matter what the academic performance of those students is. If I have a class in which all of the students have IEPs, it may be really exceptional teaching if I'm able to achieve any academic gains at all. But it doesn't mean I shouldn't use best practices, I still should. And so it's clear in this one particular class that Max taught, and it's the first time that he taught, remember that we saw lower effectiveness in that first class. What we can see is that there were a lot of different practices here in which Max really should go back and he should try to do those things more often. It doesn't mean that he didn't do them, and it doesn't mean that he did a bad job. But what Sim School is letting him know is these are good practices regardless of the age level or the kind of student that you're working with. The more that you use these practices, the better the students are, are likely to do. And we can see that Max probably started doing that, and that's why he achieved that 83% success. Know that your instructors are going to be looking at all of this information for the last class that you teach, 
So it's really important that you look at it as well. Good luck and have fun teaching in Sim School.